the what's the song you're singing? And we're back. Hi, this is the Hump Day Noon. What do we do? Pretend like we haven't started already? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi, this is Josh with uh, today's Bob and Tom Hump Day Nooner. I'm here with Mr. Chris Spangle, who normally moderates these. He'll usually uh, asks the questions that you have send that you send into us josh it's a pleasure to participate in the lowest rated nooner of all time yeah oh well it's, we're happy to have you <laughs> thank you uh we knew this would be the lowest rated which is why we decided you would <laughs> right. be the yes uh mr jeff oske is here with us he'll be moderating this week hey jeff how are you hello thanks for having me josh please ask us any questions uh, you might uh, want the answers to whether they be professional or personal we'll do our best to answer uh, honestly, and we also reserve the right not to answer any of them. Uh, Chris, for those of you who may not know, Chris Spangle is the web director for the Bob and Tom Show. Tell us a little bit about what that entails. So up until last year, uh, I was hired five years ago almost, and I do everything online. So we have a VIP service. I manage all that, all the social media, all the video, audio editing, uh, anything when you see it online, it's yeah. under... My purview. And uh, long came Jeff Oske and Bailey McComas last year, and now we have a nice little team of three, and we produce all the videos and get to do a lot more. And so it's our job to fix problems, to edit video, to make you laugh online. So that is the main thrust of what I do. And I know that uh, you guys have made a real big push this year and, and last year, and uh, we've got a lot of great digital content. Uh, I, I would almost call it original programming because we're going to have – Ep weekly, monthly, whatever episodes of things coming up. Yes. Well, all, all to be... Uh, uh, not TBA. To, yeah, yeah. So it'll be uh, a lot of fun. So please uh, keep checking out the website and the app and all our social media platforms where Chris, Jeff, and Bailey do some amazing work. And let's get to the questions if we've got some uh, coming in. Okay. Into the mic. James would like to know, Chris, how is the post-divorce life going for you? All right, so I was the subject of an infamous lunch, one of Tom's uh, finest moments. So previously, his most embarrassing lunch moment, he had been out with Chick, and he told a waitress that she looked like NASCAR driver Jimmy Spencer, which he has observed is apparently not a comment, uh, compliment. You're right. Uh, so I had been on the staff about one month when, we, when I got divorced, and uh, she had told me. So the next day, I emailed Tom, and I said, I'm getting divorced, so I'm going to need to be on our insurance. And Tom thought he was the last to know. So we went out to what Tom calls a fun lunch, and it's a bunch of people, you know, chicks there. I was there. W were you there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody, Christy, Chick, all of them, which is rare to get everybody a lunch, at lunch. So it was really like what a big deal. A good 15 people or so? Easily. Yeah. And so it was a sushi restaurant and a hibachi restaurant. And so Tom was at one end of the U. I was a little late because I had some work to do. And I showed up and I sat by myself at an opposite part of the table. And Tom, at one point, sees me sitting there alone, hmm. leans back in his chair and starts laughing. Boy, you look lonely over there. Is that because your wife told you to get out of the house? <laughs> now... <laughs> I immediately go white because I know what he just did, and nobody else in the room knew except Vibbert. And uh, and so they thought, oh, like, get out of the house. And he goes, have you found a new apartment yet? And oh, then, so he, he <laughs> digs deeper. And he oh, digs yes. deeper. Then Christy goes, are you getting divorced? And <laughs> and I go, yeah. And Chick goes, jeez. <laughs> he was so mad. He got. They all turned to Tom, and they start screaming at him. And I, he and I are howling. Like, we both, I, to this day, I think it's one of the funniest <laughs> things that's ever happened in my life. And he, uh, so it became a, a topic of conversation. But the first two years of a divorce really, really, really suck. Uh, Oske, I think you've been divorced, haven't you? A couple times. Yeah, it sucks initially. But it, it has been one of the best things ever uh, because it really forces you to examine your life and you, you become a better person because of it so i really enjoyed the divorced life okay josh have you figured out the difference between donuts and muffins yet daniel <laughs> would like to know i'm glad you brought this up daniel last week we had a bit of a controversy where i was giving my donut hierarchy which i'll run through it again mm -hmm. custard filled with chocolate icing uh <laughs> 
jelly uh, with uh, glaze, not powdered sugar. And then I said cinnamon bun. Now, come to find out, and then there was a big argument about whether or not a cinnamon bun was a donut. And I said, yes, I'm not talking about the Cinnabon cinnamon bun. I'm talking more of a cinnamon roll than you get at Krispy Kreme. I've been told that I am correct because there's a donut called a Pershing, P-E-R-S-H-I-N-G, -E that is a cinnamon bun, but it's made with donut dough. Okay. That is what I'm talking about. Rectified. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think most uh, people knew that's what I was talking about. You liar, you incredible liar. You How were am talking I liar? about cinnamon buns. You were not talking about a Pershing. Yes, I, I was. I have come I, to I, find Who knew out. the name Pershing? Luckily, we have a savvy listener that <laughs> knew what a Pershing was uh, and told me the name of it. Whatever. So I will, all right. So using that new language, I will um, amend okay. my hierarchy. Custard filled with chocolate icing, jelly glazed, not powdered sugar, Pershing. Josh, you couldn't be more wrong about this. Uh, but but it, I've just... It right. goes glazed... Oh, oh, you're talking about... I'm talking about mine. Okay. It goes glazed donut, just the classic glazed donut. It goes uh, the apple cinnamon donut, the applesauce donut, and then the blueberry cake donut. And then the chocolate-covered yeast. That's the official hierarchy of donuts. So your hierarchy has four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Am I supposed to have five? No, I only have three. Oh, okay. Well, which, I'm, I'm fatter than you. Which leads You're one to, donut fatter. <laughs> which leads to this question from Raymond. Who has the fattest story? Uh, All right. Well, I guess that we would have to talk about the fattest things we've done. Then. You go first because you're, you're a known quantity, and I need some time to think about mine. Um, the fattest thing I've ever done probably was when I bonged a bowl of cereal. Uh, we took a beer bong and filled it with Lucky Charms and then milk. And then I tried to bong the bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was the cereal just stayed, stayed stuck to the funnel and the milk shot oh. into my body at 90 <laughs> miles per hour. And... So I just I just bonged milk. I said the cereal did not did not uh, get in. So, but I certainly tried it. I have two, and I'm not sure which is fatter. Uh, the first was uh, in my early 20s. I would go to McDonald's, and one night I was really hungry, so I got a large fry, two cheeseburgers, a Big Mac, and a 10 piece chicken McNugget, and I ate it all. Wow! I got sick, and I couldn't eat McDonald's for two two years. Um, and then two vacations ago, I ate pizza every single day. Now, I'm, a, I'm lactose intolerant, and I don't do well on carbs. And at that point, I was two, 300 pounds, uh, I was over 300 pounds. And I was like, I've got to get my life together because I've had pizza for about 11 days straight. It was really about 11? It was 10 or 11 Because we have that long Christmas break. And you had pizza every day? Every single day. Not every meal. Uh, lunch and dinner mostly, because I'd eat the leftover pizza and then I'd order another one. So almost every meal. Almost every meal. What, were they from the same place? Mostly, yes. Jets Pizza, which is a local chain here. And was it the same toppings and everything, or would you? Yes, I'm a creature of habit. Okay, so, so this if was I the, like essentially the same pizza, right? Man, I, that's probably fatter. Uh, eat, yeah, be just because that's like, a, like a, at that point it's actually like a lifestyle yes. that you're living, <laughs> as opposed to one you know, one shot thing. Well, I was at one point in my life 330 pounds, and I did the My Fitness Pal, and I found out I was eating 5,000 calories a day. Yeah, okay, which is not hard to do. No, I mean, if you especially, yeah, right, right. You, you, you go to you, McDonald's you, for breakfast, you have two or three Cokes a day, you have a candy bar, you have a rich meal at lunch, a rich meal for dinner, you're at 5,000 easy. Yeah. Um, and what is that, about double what yeah, somebody what, you or me, uh, uh, our almost, size, should be eating? Uh, yeah, we should be around 2,200. Okay. If we want to lose weight. If we want to lose <laughs> weight. If we want to maintain, then 3,000, 4,000. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like 4,000 yeah. seems like a, it's a lot. It does. But if you're eating empty calories, like drinking soda. Right, it's real easy to it's do. It's so easy to right. do. Yeah. 
Rick would like to know, Josh, have you starred in any independently produced movies that you would like to talk about? <laughs> oh, okay. and what's the name? Rick. Okay, I just I wanted to know if it was the name of one of the directors. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there are uh, a few out there that you can find. Uh, the Impersonators. Um, I'm not sure where you can find that now, but it was available for a while on Blu-ray. Actually, if you go to my website, thatjoshcharnold.com, it's no longer available. But if you buy a shirt but put in the notes that you want it to be the Impersonator's Blu-ray, I will. And it's the same price, so I'll, I'll just send out the Blu-ray. I've, I've done it like ten times. There's no issues. I know it sounds sketchy, but it's... And then... Uh, you, you can also uh, show up here. He's got some in the trunk. <laughs> uh, I was also in a, in a family film called Marshall's Miracle uh, about a uh, friendly dog that helps a kid from being bullied, and I played a pet store owner. And then I was in a movie called Space Babes from Outer Space where I played a um, kind of a hillbilly dad of a really questionable family. Uh, and that movie's a lot of fun. It's a throwback to 80s sexploitation films you might see late at night on Cinemax. So, yeah. All right, this one's for Mr. Spangle. What is the best and worst part of your job? Well, Jeff and Josh, I would say there's there's two things that I really love about this job. Uh, the first are the people that I work with. Uh, and I know that's cliche, but I really enjoy the people that we, we have around here. Like yesterday, we, we were talking about stuff that we want to do. It turned into like a fun hour-long chat session in the green room. And it's just nice to work with people that you like. And there's nobody here that except Grace, that I really fight with all the time. And I, I'd say that jokingly. Um, and, and the second is I wanted, when I was a kid, I wanted to to work here. I, and I never, ever expected that I would ever meet Bob or Tom, let alone work here. Uh, so it's a lifelong dream fulfilled. And I always wanted to go into broadcasting. I always wanted to go into media production. And so working at the Bob and Tom show, like working for Tom, here, watching how he crafts content, how he's built the staff, how uh, Jeff thinks as a writer, and how he that affects video, how you write comedy and movies. You know, th working with a group of really talented people, Dean, you know, has, has always been influential in a lot of that too. Uh, and I know I'm leaving everybody out, but l learning every aspect of the media business has been the best part about it other than the people. Because I really feel like I'm getting an education that you couldn't get anywhere else that I'll use for the rest of my career. And I'm 34, but I expect to, you know, work for longer than uh, the next two years. Uh, so so that's probably the best part. The worst part used to be the schedule because I would come in at 6, uh, and I don't come in at 6 anymore. Uh, I work I work uh, the, the longer full day shift and fortunately have shoved all the early morning duties off to Bailey and Oskay. Uh, that was the worst part because you never really feel like a normal person. Like Josh is zoned out right now. Like, and it's no, because I'm, I'm listening. I just when I listen to somebody, I don't look at. If you want to know when I'm not listening to you, it's when I'm staring at you. <laughs> I, I fake it. So, well, I have great eyes. So <laughs> I would say that. Um, man, I don't know. I think that's. There's really not a lot about this job. I, I used to do construction cleanup, and so my job was carrying around buckets and working on construction sites and. That that gives you a lot of perspective. This isn't really work. All right, this is for both of you. Lighten it up a little. Uh, Josh, you're a real Bigfoot guy. Have either of you ever been out on a hunt for Bigfoot? I've not. No. Is Bigfoot code? Uh, no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> then no, I have. <laughs> they have the <laughs> word hunt in quotation. Right. So I don't know if that's a. Would you go out on a uh, a. Uh, Bigfoot hunt. Yeah, I mean, I think I would only. I think I would have to. I would have to go to the Pacific Northwest and do it. I wouldn't want to go to where like, Nashville. I, yeah, I would want to go where like. I mean, there. You know, there are sightings kind of all over, but I would want to go where there are, there are the most sightings. Right. And I don't know that I would want to go with like a team. I'd rather just go with like like me, just me, or one other person, and like. Get in the thick of it and then just see what happens, if anything. Who makes it out alive? Right. <laughs> what about, do you believe in uh, I don't. Spangles? No, I'm a very uh, skeptical person in general, and it's hard for me to believe that there is a creature roaming around on Earth that all of humanity, when they have 
phones that have cameras and video and it, it just it's a statistical impossibility in my opinion that bigfoot exists yeah, maybe improbable not necessarily impossible mm, i'm gonna go <laughs> Uh, Josh, does Tom's repetitiveness get on your nerves at all? Um, Especially on today's, like today, when he wouldn't drop that stupid Dixon back at Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, initially it kind of does. It's like, uh But then I remember, you know, there are certain rules to radio, and that's one of them is people don't, not most people don't listen all morning long. And so to... To repeat certain things that are funny or interesting um, is a rule. I mean, you should do that. People think that they listen, that everybody listens the way they listen. And the, yeah, and it's just know. not the case. Right. So, I get, so, yeah, I mean, it does get kind of irritating, but knowing that, it makes sense to me. Also, whenever he's beating a dead horse, he's usually getting so much joy out of it <laughs> that it's hard to get irritated because it's like, this guy, there's no... I mean, it would uh, it would be like getting mad at a child <laughs> for throwing mud at cars. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. It's kind of it's pretty annoying, but I get why you think that's so fun. <laughs> I, Tom, Tom laughing at himself is probably my favorite thing on the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he really does please himself. Yeah. Well. And well, yeah, you know, comedically, uh, I don't know about sexually. <laughs> Uh, Josh would like to know, uh, Josh, you you referenced the Taco Grande song on the show yesterday. <laughs> uh, do either of you have a favorite weird album song, album, or both? Oh, I've, I ha let's see. Weird Al, um, like one of the first. Like, are you saying Weird Al or Weird Album? Weird Al. Okay. Album, album. or song. Yes. And or both. Uh, so... My favorite Weird Al album is probably even worse. Um, it has fat on it. It has stuck in a closet with Vanna White. <laughs> that was, I think that was right. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that chestnut. <laughs> I, I remember buying that cassette tape and just wearing it out. Right. A uh, song, that's tough. Um... Man, I'd have to think harder on song. Oh, you know what? My, one of them is one of his latest ones. It was a parody of that uh, Robin Thicke song. Yeah, that was really good. About the And I recommend watching the video because the words are so fast that when you watch it, it's just about grammatical errors and emails and texts. <laughs> it's really funny. I forget exactly what it's called. But. Was, was word it, crimes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, word, word crimes. crimes. Yeah. It's was, so good. Oh, yeah. I love really it. well done. Was this Christy that asked? Uh, no, this was Josh. Josh, okay. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, I, I wouldn't say that I have any Weird Al albums that I've bought since I was 13. Right. Uh, but when I was a kid, Fat was one of the funniest things I'd ever seen in my life. I would tape it on a VHS and I'd watch it over and over and over because as a five-year-old, there was nothing funnier than watching him expand in, in that Fat video. <laughs> so I'd say that one. And I recommend UH the movie UHF is oh, one of my favorite comedies. Great. Oh. <laughs> Josh, what's your uh, favorite John Carpenter film and why isn't it Big Trouble in Little China? <laughs> Jason would like to know that. I love the assumption that it's that it's not Big Trouble and he's right. Jason might already know that I that Halloween is my favorite John Carpenter film. Um if I were to pick a second it would maybe be the thing, even though it's super unpleasant, um, but I think that's probably. I mean, man, you know, man. And then just for fun, like there are some that are just f more fun than. I mean, I love Big Trouble, but I I'd probably go They Live over Big Trouble in terms of that the fight scene between Keith David and Roddy Piper and They Live is just too fun for me to ignore. So, but I am a big fan of Big Trouble do in you, Little China. Do you have a favorite one, Chris? I, I, listen, I I have uh, very few interests, and those interests that I do have, I'm obsessive about, and horror movies are not one of those. I've barely seen any of the movies that you ever talk about on the Nooner. Uh, I don't know anything about sports. Uh, so when you say John Carpenter, you could have made up a name. <laughs> like, if you, na if you named some of his movies, I might know some of the movies, but... 
All right. Here, here's something you would like, Chris. Speak on how social media has changed over your five years and the effect of social media has changed things. Is this is this a, a final? Christy. Yeah, it's legit. Uh, is this a final? Uh, yes, I, I've got my notes prepared. You have your blue book? Uh, no, but see, this is one of the things I'm interested in. So I can talk all day on this. Yes, uh, please do. Yeah. Let's keep it to two to three minutes. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I got my start. You know, I started at a at a small AM radio station right when social media was beginning, and we didn't have any budget to market, and so social media was a way for us to uh, to actually market the show. And then I went to work for a political party. It was a third party that had absolutely no money. And third so, party, throw your vote away. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so <laughs> it, it, that's really where I got very good at using social media to build brands. And you could do that in that era. And so when the job opportunity came up here, my strength was really social media marketing and, and driving us up on social. And in the five years since I've been here, I've watched Facebook break almost every promise to us. They'll say, oh, yeah, you need to go on pages, put a lot of money into pages, advertise on these on this platform. That's where we're at. And then all of a sudden they turn off the spigot and you've got to go to Facebook Live. You've got to go do something else. So. I've seen them uh, do a lot of things that have hurt them with their advertisers, the people that pay their 98% of their bills. I've seen the privacy stuff, which I have less of a problem with than some of the, you know, I gave you money, now you're changing the rules type of thing. Uh, the privacy stuff, you willingly give all of your information to this website. You know, my the stuff that got stolen in the Cambridge Analytica thing, I gave to them, and I, I was fine with that. Um but I can see how people feel creeped out by that. And so I've seen social media sites start to clamp down on free speech, on the ability to use their platforms to market anything, to spread any idea. And they're really trying to focus on your friends and family. But the problem is the Bob and Tom show and these professional content creators are way more interesting than what your aunt and uncle have to say on Facebook. And so they're going to see a lot of people leaving their platforms because the content isn't as interesting. And so I think that is really kind of where it's heading. I think you're going to see a large return to websites, to email, and to actual real-life conversations. So back, I mean, which would essentially be back to where it was before social media. Absolutely. It will still always exist. It will still always be a part of it. But when you look at the behavior of Gen Z, the people behind my generation, the millennials, they're really only using social to talk to the people that they care about face to face. Their immediate friends, their family. That's what they use social for. They don't use it to broadcast like older millennials like myself do. Uh, and so I think you're going to see a, a major shift in social, but it still will exist. I mean, MySpace still exists, but it's not going to be the gargantuan thing that it's been. All right. Uh, Jason would like to know, uh, Chris, then Josh, what are your hierarchy of pies? Oh, I've got a lot of thoughts on this. <laughs> so there's you've got your fruit pies, and then you've got your cream pies. You familiar with cream pies, Jeff? Uh, <laughs> the dessert. The dessert. Uh, and it depends on what mood I'm in. I, sometimes I'm in the mood for a fruit pie, and then my go-to is apple and pumpkin. And then sometimes I'm in the mood for a cream pie, and that, that's when I like coconut cream. Now, if you were to ask me what my favorite of those three pies is... Which this person did? I, uh, I have no answer for you because it depends on my mood. Okay. I'm going to be a slippery politician and say, I don't know the answer to that. It's whatever you like, sir. Huh. I'm just going to combine all pies. Right. Okay. Um, apple. Banana cream. Mm. Coconut cream. Mm. And, and, and here's the thing. Pumpkin... Is in there, man, pumpkin is real close into, the, into cracking that top three. And pecan or pecan or pecan. I Because I think it's pecan sandy pecan pie. Right. I think, I think the word following either pecan or pecan, that should decide if it's pecan or pecan. Right. So... <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, Tom's piling. Are there? Is there anyone still watching this? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people watching. They're loving it. I, I would say also a uh, chocolate pie, a nice chocolate like pie. Like a chocolate cream? Oh, Tom's Pie Lady makes a chocolate sea salt 
that is to die for. Yeah, that thing's ridiculous. It's so good. So that, yeah, I'm gonna. That, I'll stick with my eye. Yeah. I I have a follow up question to that. When it comes to a pot pie, yeah, what is your pie hierarchy? Oh, I, I really the only I, I think pot pies begin and end with chicken. <laughs> um, wrong. What? Well, how am I wrong? It's turkey. Okay. Turkey. All right. Pot I'm, pie. I'm, I'm, all right. Yeah. Sure. Any fowl is fine. I think. Right. I'm not a beef pot pie fan. You put ham in my pot pie. We're not talking. Yeah. Anymore. No. No. No room for ham either. No. Now a shepherd's pie. I'm a fan of. Never had that. What's in it? Oh, it's great. It's like uh, ground beef, mashed potatoes, and vegetables. I'm in. All in. It's layered, but then it you know gets yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. All right, Mr. Spangle, Eric would like to know, who is your favorite brother? <laughs> okay. And re- real quick, Cheesecake Factory has a mean shepherd's pie. Okay. I really recommend it. Don't like cheesecake. But you, there's no cheesecake in the shepherd's pie at Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> right. Okay. So my brother's name is Eric, and I have a sister, Jessica. And oh, is that why, is is that Eric? why it says Eric Spangle, who's right. your favorite brother? Is and, Eric the one who thought I was mad at him? Yes. <laughs> I wasn't, Eric. I was, I was being uh, so silly. Every week, as I moderate, I have a large group of online friends who like to troll the Nooner comment section asking questions, uh, what do you think of Chris Spangle? And then they go, why do you never answer my questions? I go, because no one cares about me. And Eric is one of those people who's always trying to get Josh to talk about him. So, Oh, he, John, Eric wants me to talk about Eric, him? Literally every week, Eric asks an Eric and Chris-related question. Gotcha. Eric, you're a fine man, and I'm a fan of yours. Is that enough for him? I'm sure that's enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, Alethea. <laughs> I know. Would like to know, uh, for each of you, uh, favorite superhero and why? Uh, either Spawn, Sp- I love Spawn, um, because it's, he, it's so dark and he's so tortured. Uh, Batman is probably my mainstream, you know, Spawn isn't considered mainstream. Batman, just because he's, um, so imperfect and ha- has a dark past. I- I've never been a Superman guy because he's just too perfect to me. Yeah. It's not that, it's not as interesting Su- for, to me, but I. No, I- I'm totally with you. Superman sucks. And Batman rules, and it's because he's got complexity to him. The storylines are already better. It's why the Superman movies are all campy, and the Batman movies are dark. The Christopher Nolan Batmans are so good. So, yeah, they, yeah, they're great. Yeah, Batman better than Superman. All right, we're gonna do two more questions and wrap it up. Uh, Kevin uh, would like to know, Chris, how do you handle s- negative social media douchebags? By the way, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny, and that is a really good question. Uh, yeah, so I would I would say that the there is one bad part of this job, and it is when you get someone writing in to tell you about something that's broken, and they're an a-hole about it, and they're incredibly insulting and rude. Now, do you mean technically broken? Tre- technically. So we have a lot of different aspects that go into uh, the online presence of the Bob and Tom show. And a lot of proprietary stuff. And so oftentimes there are things about that proprietary software or equipment that will go wrong. And it's my job to fix it, work with our vendors to fix that stuff. And we never want anything to be broken. The three of us work hard to make sure that everything works as flawlessly as possible. But in the world of technology, it's just that's not realistic. There's always going to be issues. And so I I regularly answer the more complicated, uh, let's say, uh, of the social media stuff, and you do it in the nicest way possible. And I think that if somebody's angry that something's not working, it's because they depend on it and they care about it. And so to me, in if I'm in that person's shoes, they want you to be nice to them. And they send in a nasty email, you write a polite email back, and they go, oh, wow, I didn't know I was talking to a real person. And so I think that anytime you're writing customer service of any business, Realize there's a person on the other end, and you don't need to be rude about it. Uh, and if they're, you know, I just try to a- answer everyone with kindness. Uh, you know, we get all kinds of comments. Every time you make a joke about killing an animal or something on air, uh, you know, hey, I'm sorry. We we try to be respectful, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean. Yeah, I mean, that, that's misunderstood. And I, you know, I'm never, none of us, I, I think, are ever out to uh, hurt anybody's feelings. or anything. There's no, there's never any malice behind. Well, even if I get really upset about, you know, 
a song that all of us in here have will get real passionate about that song sucks we don't we, half the time we don't we're not that passionate about it <laughs> one, one thing i've learned <laughs> is that when you have million you have this enormous sample size of people right and people are sharing opinions or putting themselves out there there's going to be people who go I'm offended by that or I'm mad about that or we do a lot of news stories and sometimes we get notes from the family back. And, like, I'm sorry that we made fun of your family member, for instance. We certainly never intend to hurt any of those people. It's it's just right. it's, it's just like a statistical improbability that you're not going to say something on air that won't cause a problem. Yeah, I mean, and, and so I will – Chick is good. He and I will both make jokes about, you know, say a sad animal story or something. Right. And the joke is not that we're laughing that some an animal was hurt or that. <laughs> the joke is why would we ever bring it up? Like, right. why, what are we doing? And it's really just to try to get Tom and Christy upset. Like, you know right. what I mean? We're going for in the room, but the, yeah, I mean, of course, <laughs> it's, it's if people think that Chick McGee, who's one of the who's like the biggest animal lover I've ever met in my easily. life, really wants <laughs> animals hurt. They're, I mean, they just don't know. They're just not getting it. Yeah. All right, we're going to end on this question right here because multiple women have now questioned. Uh, Kathy and Christy would both like to know, boxers, briefs, or commando? We'll start with Josh. Uh, boxers during the day, I sleep commando. I wear briefs during the day because I like a nice control. And then I wear, brief, I wear boxers around the house and I sleep nude. All righty. Fascinating. I feel I, like that's a wrong way to end. Like that's. A, well, I have a, I have a follow up. All to right. The earlier question about social media. Okay. And I know we're trying to wrap this up. No, no, you're fine. Um, so, what do you? How do you handle people who criticize the show? Uh, I've had sort of an evolution personally because I took it really personally in the beginning. Uh, it would, it, you know, there have been points over the five years where. It's such a, a large flow of negativity back to the accounts that it makes you depressed because you, you, you open it up and, and it's just like negativity, negativity, and you're just like, ugh. You know? And people oftentimes just send negative comments without giving anyone the benefit of the doubt uh, or thinking empathetically about what may be going on here or what maybe there's just a piece of technology that broke and they're working on it and they'll get it fixed. Uh, so early on, I took it really personally because I really um, – I have such a love and an affinity for this show. I've listened my entire life, uh, and I really greatly respect Tom and everybody that works here, like Chick, Christy, you, and all my coworkers. Uh, so it's tough sometimes to see your friends get criticized. Uh, but you have to realize that sometimes when people make those comments, they're commenting from a place of negativity because things in their life aren't great, and they really just need you to be nice to them. And, like, if you're nice. Uh, but now I'm at a point where it's just part of the job, and you just kind of, you know, you, you really kind of have to work through it and go, this person's not trying to be mean. They're not – they're they're really just passionate about the show, and you should respect that. So yeah, that's it's part interesting, of it. isn't it? And, and you, you have to just realize that there's so many different types of people in the world. It doesn't matter how likable Josh Arnold is. There's people who aren't going to like Josh Arnold. Yeah, no, yeah, for you sure. Know? And uh, having been on air and in broadcast myself in the past, uh, I, I, I learned that lesson early. And I think that background kind of helps me with social media because we want communication with the show. Like we started a Facebook group because we want to have a better relationship with our fans. We start multiple Twitter accounts and you talk to people on Twitter. We tweet because we want to connect with the audience. Uh, and... When you do that, when you put yourself out there, you know you're going to get some bad apples. But by and large, once you actually engage the people who are being negative, they're really actually pretty decent people. I mean, they're very nice. It's You just have to kind of go, all right, let's step back. Let me wait a day and respond if it's really harsh. Josh, how do you feel that you deal? Do you ever get that like on Twitter? I know you're active on Twitter. How do you deal with anyone being negative towards you? Uh, a couple different ways. Sometimes a lot of I'm kind of a believer in um, only acknowledging people who are interested in spreading positive uh, you know, vibes. So sometimes I'll just flat out ignore it, and I'll just remember, yeah, you know, I'm not forever. And sometimes I'll respond, hey, that's no worries if you're not a fan of mine. I get it. You know, not everybody's going to be. 
Thanks, but keep listening because Chick is la- Chick and Tom and Christy are great. You know that kind of because it's the truth. Like you don't have to like. I mean, right. Part of the show is ball busting, and so right. and you, that, people that, want to get in on it. They're just not as good as Chick and Josh are. That's another <laughs> thing is like people will some uh, sometimes I'll go oh geez. And then it'll take me saying, oh, no, no, wait, this person's just trying to match the tone of the conversation. That Like, they're just, they're trying to bust balls like we are to each other. So a lot of times, so if sometimes I have a question, and this, this honestly takes more time than I want it to, I'll go and look and see if they follow me. And if they do, it's like, all right, they're probably just giving me a hard time. They're not, I mean, if they took the time to follow me, they're prob- they probably don't hate me. Right. So they're probably just joking around. And I give them the benefit of the doubt. I have gone off. Because sometimes, you know, at the end of the day, or you have a bad day or whatever, and one thing, one comment will send you over the edge. I have responded negatively in turn, and I've never felt good about it. It's never, and I've given way too much credence to it. That's my biggest issue. Is I've, and I, so I, I don't give, I try not to give any credence to it anymore. Here's a, man, I've been off, I haven't been on Twitter the last three days, mm-hmm. and, um, I, I don't I don't miss it at all. Like I I really like talking to fans on the show, but I, I I'm having I'm having I'm wrestling with social media right now. I, and I saw at the beginning of the year the most the the most uh, common New Year's resolution was to get off of social media, and I made a concerted effort to limit my social media time to limit my time on my phone because I I've learned that that can be an addiction and there's aspects to it, but. The, my friends who have gone off of Facebook completely or gone off of Twitter completely, they're like, I'm so much happier. And and I've found that with, with various sites. I'd say uh, y- you you don't really miss a lot <laughs> if you're not on you, social media. You don't. I miss the people who send in... Nice stuff. Yeah, well, and jokes, and even, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I miss... But I'm only right now I'm only on Twitter and Instagram. I got rid of everything else, and so... Uh, I I do like them, but at the same time, but I haven't missed it being on them. I'd say if I had a hierarchy of social media rules, number one would give people the benefit of the doubt and really think about what you say before you hit send because ultimately you have to think about every statement you put online as a reflection of your personal values. And I think this is big in politics too where people say things that if they were looking at the person, they wouldn't say that. So I think give people the benefit of the doubt and try and when you use negativity and criticism, use it wisely. Uh, number two is don't be unnecessarily mean. I think there are times when people say things about the people in this room, and I look at it and I go, why do you have to be so rude about that person? Uh, this is just like something they can't even change about themselves, so why would you say that? Uh, and I think number three, realize that especially with the, the show, we're joking. You know, and I love Tom, and uh, I I really the only thing that still really bugs me is that people don't understand who Tom truly is, and so they take it way too far sometimes with like Tom's a, an a a hole or whatever. <laughs> right. Like when he's really not, he's actually a really great person. But you know, he's I think you're completely fine in saying Tom's being an a hole, <laughs> right? Exactly right. <laughs> or Josh is being yeah. an idiot, or you know, yeah, right. But it, it's it's yeah, it's a it's a good thing around here. All right. Thanks for uh, thanks thanks Jeff. Yeah, thanks very much, Jeff. Thank you guys, and thanks so much for uh, everybody who tunes in live and uh, later on on what YouTube and uh, all YouTube. that good stuff. Really appreciate you taking the time and uh, asking some questions and watching these. Uh, Chris, thanks so much for joining us, man. Thank you. Yeah, we put these on the podcast. We have a free podcast feed, so look in Apple, uh, Google Play, anywhere where podcasts are sold, and you can get the podcast or at Bob and Tom dot Fireside dot FM. Great. And and subscribe. You can listen to all the Nooners plus all kinds of great clips. Lots of clips. And yes. And regardless of whether or not we get back to you on social media, uh, which we do, we definitely do try to do. We, have uh, we really appreciate everybody who's. Thousands of messages a week. So we we read everything. We just can't always respond is the yeah, way I'd put it. So. Yep. Just be patient with us, Walter. Uh, but we definitely appreciate all of you very, very much. So thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next week.